Ryan, your MVP candidate in Edmonton Greaseball. And I'm Gil McGowan, your NDP candidate right here in Edmonton Centre. You know, we are less than 75 hours away from the polls closing right here in Edmonton. And it's great to see so many people here to welcome back to our city, our leader, the next Prime Minister, Tom Mulcair. how much I appreciate the hard work of thousands of Albertans over the past 76 days. Thank you very much for your time, your generous support, and your dedication. Now it's time for the biggest push of this campaign. This is what it's all about. This evening, tomorrow, Sunday, and Monday, we need to work harder than ever to knock on every door and talk to every voter. And we need to let every Albertan know that the NDP is ready to bring change to Ottawa. You know, you know, across this country, the NDP needs just 35 more seats to defeat Stephen Harper. We are closer than ever. that win some seats right here in Edmonton. With your help on Monday, we will elect Aaron Paquette in Edmonton Manning. In Edmonton Millwood, we'll elect Jasper Dio. In Edmonton Riverbend, we will elect Brian Fleck. Saskatchewan, in Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, Joanne Kay. In Peace River, Westlock, Cam Alexis. In Sturgeon River, Parkland, Guy DeBorg. In Red Deer Lacombe, Doug Hart. And in Edmonton West, we're going to elect Heather McKenzie. In Edmonton, Wakaskwin, Fritz Spitz. In Grand Curry, Mackenzie, Saba, Mosags. Mosagsi. In Edmonton, Strathcona, we will re elect Linda Duncan. We also have with us Catherine Swampy. Running in Battle River Crowfoot and Darlene Maleko running in Edmonton, St. Albert. And it goes without saying that, of course, the voters of Edmonton Greaseball will elect Janice Irwin as their member of Parliament. And of course, we will elect Gil McGowan in Edmonton Center. here in Edmonton. Across the country, NDP teams are working hard to defeat Conservatives in every corner of Canada. Right next door in Saskatchewan, there's Saskatoon West, where our team will defeat the Conservatives and elect Sherry Benson. And in Saskatoon University, we will defeat the Conservatives and elect Claire Card. In Regina, Louvain, We'll defeat the Conservatives and elect Aaron Weir. And over in Manitoba, our NDP in Elmwood, Transcona, will defeat the Conservatives and elect Daniel Blakey. And these are just a few of the ridings where it is New Democrats who will defeat Conservatives on Monday. tonight with us are a few people who know a little bit about defeating Conservatives. We are joined by a whole heck of a lot of Alberta NDP MLA. Stand up, will you? That's 
right, Johnny? about defeating conservatives here in Alberta. <laughs> That's right, Janice. And in just a minute, we will hear from her, the very first NDP Premier of Alberta, Rachel Notley. And now, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you Premier Rachel Notley. <laughs> It is so wonderful to be here tonight with all of you. As a proud New Democrat, to welcome the leader of Canada's NDP, Tom Mulcair. So let me tell you something. On Monday, we aren't just going to send Linda Duncan back to Ottawa although that's an awesome thing. We are going to send more Alberta New Democrats to Ottawa than ever before. Just a few months ago, right here in Alberta, we faced a tired conservative government, dogged by scandals and determined to cut public services. A conservative government that wanted Albertans to think there was no other choice. A conservative government that wanted all of us to think the change wasn't possible. And that Albertans weren't ready for that change. Well, my friends. <laughs> for change. Now our province, our province is built on the strength of our communities, fueled by an unwavering sense of optimism and home to families from across the country and around the world who are determined to build a better future together. And after four decades of conservative failures and scandals, Albertans asked our party to form a new government that truly reflects the people of this province. A progressive, modern, forward-looking government. Now you may have heard me say this before, but it bears repeating, as Premier, of course, I have an important responsibility to work with whoever forms the next federal government. No matter who is the next Prime Minister, I will do my job to stand up for the best interests of Albertans and to engage collaboratively and respectfully with my counterparts from across the country. I've made that commitment repeatedly and I will keep that commitment. But tonight, this evening, with you as an Albertan, as a mother, and as a proud Canadian, I want to say this. It is time to elect Tom Mulcair as our next Prime Minister. This spring, in our provincial election, we invited Albertans to not repeat history, but to make history. And now I want to say the very same thing to every Canadian. We have a historic opportunity in just three days. We have an opportunity to elect a new federal government that truly reflects all Britons and all Canadians. A, pro a progressive, modern, forward-looking federal government for the very first time. 
Together, together as Canadians, let's make history. For the first time, every Canadian has a real choice in this election. We can elect a Prime Minister who works with Albertans to create good jobs and fair wages right here at home and to build a sustainable and prosperous economy that leaves no one behind. A Prime Minister who protects and strengthens the universal public health care that we all cherish and that all of our families depend on. who respects First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. And who will follow the lead of our own government in moving to adopt the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous People. who supports some of the lowest paid and most vulnerable workers by raising the federal minimum wage to $15, just like our province is doing here in Alberta. A Prime Minister, a Prime Minister who believes in protecting the fundamental human rights of Canadians and who does the right thing because it's the right thing to do. A Prime Minister, a Prime Minister with principles, with experience, with intellectual honesty, who brings out the very best in all of us as Canadians. A Prime... Ultimately, a Prime Minister who works every day, every day, to bring Canadians together, to bridge our differences, and to celebrate our diversity. The diversity that I believe and New Democrats know is our greatest strength. Now, now is the time, my fellow New Democrats, that Prime Minister, the Prime Minister that we need today, is the leader of our party, my colleague and my friend, Tom Mulcair. Are you ready to bring change to Ottawa? Really? I mean, it's only been 148 years that they've been telling us that we have no choice but to flip back and forth between liberal corruption and conservative corruption. You're sure you're ready for change in Ottawa? Are you ready to replace the politics of fear and division with with the politics of hope and optimism. Well, that works out well, because I'm ready too. <laughs> Friends, it's great to be back in this amazing city on the traditional territory of the Treaty 6 First Nations. And what an incredible honor it is to be introduced by Premier Notley. Now this weekend is a special weekend because it marks one year since the Premier was elected leader of Alberta's NDP. 
and what a year it's been. Premier, the leadership you're providing in Alberta to strengthen health care and education is recognized not only here in the province, but right across Canada. And the leadership you are providing on climate change is not only being recognized throughout Canada, it's being recognized internationally as well. Premier Notley, thank you for making us proud here at home and proud on the world stage. My friends, they said we could never win in Quebec. But our friend Jack Layton proved them wrong. They said we'd never win in Alberta. But with Rachel Notley, you all proved them wrong. And, you know, they're saying the same thing now. But this Monday, with your help, new Democrats will prove that Canadians are ready for change. Yes, we'll send Linda Duncan back to Ottawa to build on her incredible legacy of standing up for this great city. And we'll do even more than that. On Monday, Albertans are ready to send more due Democrats to Ottawa than ever before. Together, we will protect good jobs for families, strengthen our public health care, and protect our environment. And we will build a fairer, more sustainable, and more prosperous Canada. That's who we are. From our earliest days, Canadians have placed their confidence in us as New Democrats to stand up for families across this country. And that trust is built on our enduring belief as Canadians. It's the belief that we all stand taller when we stand together. We're all better off when we take better care of each other. And we all get further ahead when no one is left behind. En 2011, Jack Layton a invité les Canadiens à travailler ensemble, les francophones avec les anglophones, l'Ouest avec l'Est, parce que lui il savait qu'en travaillant ensemble, on peut accomplir de grandes choses. C'est aussi ma conviction. Et l'histoire nous donne raison. Le Canada avance quand on est solidaire les uns avec les autres. C'est le principe qui a amené Tommy Douglas à créer le régime public d'assurance santé il y a 70 ans de ça. Et aujourd'hui, aujourd c'est le même principe qui nous amène à proposer de nouveaux projets ambitieux pour bâtir un pays plus prospère. It is. It is the idea of taking better care of each other that guided Tommy Douglas to build Medicare, the greatest achievement by the greatest Canadian. And today, as a father, grandfather, that same idea motivates me to build a better Canada, not just for today, but also for the long term, for the sake of all of our children and grandchildren. As Canadians, we know that we can build a brighter future. We can build a Canada where families have good jobs, where every worker gets fair wages, and where young people have the opportunities they need to succeed. We can build a Canada where our land, air, and water are protected. A Canada, yes, Linda will help us get that down. A Canada that fights climate change with real targets that make our country a global leader on this, the defining issue of our generation. Yeah. 
We can build a Canada where families have affordable, quality childcare for just $15 a day. To hear Justin Trudeau tell it today, because the Liberals never got it done, it means it can't be done. I, I really think that Mr. Trudeau should stop confusing the limits of his abilities with the limits of what can be accomplished. Quality, affordable, maximum $15 a day childcare is just one election away with the NDP. We can build a Canada where every Canadian has access to a family doctor and where every Canadian has access to cheaper prescription drugs. We have to complete the work that Tommy Douglas started on Medicare. Pharmacare is the next phase and we will get it done. And we can usher in a new era of prosperity and opportunity for First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples built built on a true nation-to-nation -nation relationship. I could not have been more honored to accept the invitation from the Assembly of First Nations to join chiefs from across the country at the Enoch Cree Nation here in Edmonton just last week. It's worth noting that they invited all of the federal leaders and I was the only one to accept their invitation. And I could not have been prouder yesterday when the Assembly of First Nations gave top marks to the NDP platform for Indigenous Peoples. raised. I was raised to understand that actions speak louder than words. And as your Prime Minister, our success will be measured by the progress we make to improve life for First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples across Canada. But to build a better Canada, we need to defeat Stephen Harper and elect a new government that stands up for Canadian families. Under Mr. Harper, we've seen 400,000 good-paying manufacturing jobs disappear from the Canadian economy. But for me, that's not a, just a number. I think of the families that I've met during this campaign. I think of their pain. I think of the fact that they're worried whether or not their kids are going to be able to afford to go to university. See, in Mr. Harper's Canada, those good-paying, family-sustaining jobs are being replaced by low-wage, part-time, precarious jobs. That's no way to build the Canada of our dreams. We'll get it done. We'll bring back those good jobs. Today, there are nearly, today there are nearly 300,000 more Canadians unemployed than before Mr. Harper's first recession. Mr. Harper has failed to protect good jobs, and he's failed to clean up Ottawa. Steve, Stephen Harper only managed to replace liberal scandals and corruption with conservative scandals and corruption. Today, 
One third of the Senate, liberal and conservative, is under investigation. Just another reason why we want to get rid of the Senate, right? And Mr. Harper's own hand-picked ethics spokesman was just taken off to jail. After 10 years of Stephen Harper, Canadians are ready for change. But what Mr. Trudeau calls real change is actually just the same old Liberal Party with the same old insiders pulling the strings and the same old scandals. We already knew that at the most important moments, Mr. Trudeau would side with Stephen Harper, just like he did on Bill C-51. The NDP has the courage of its convictions and we stood strong and voted against Bill C-51. Justin Trudeau, Justin Trudeau says he's different, but you know what? He has voted with Stephen Harper a total of 71 times. And just like Stephen Harper, Justin Trudeau refuses to set targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This week, Canadians learned something about Mr. Trudeau's Liberal Party. We learned that Mr. Trudeau's campaign co-chair has been advising a major corporation how, when, and who to lobby to gain access to influence Mr. Trudeau right in the middle of the election campaign. Let's be clear what that means. Mr. Trudeau's inner circle is already opening the door to influence from major corporations and lobbyists right now. Moreover, Justin Trudeau's key advisor has connections to individuals at the center of both the liberal sponsorship scandal and a conservative influence peddling scandal as well. It is the same old liberal party. Now at first, the liberals said that Dan Gagné had done nothing wrong. Then Mr. Trudeau said his advisor's actions were unacceptable. Then the Liberals said that Mr. Gagné resigned as soon as the Liberals became aware. Like he does sound like Harper. <laughs> but now we've learned that Mr. Trudeau knew all along that his senior advisor was already on the payroll of a major corporation during the election campaign. They may try to fool you by giving the old car a fresh coat of paint, but as we've seen this week, the Liberal Party is still the same rust bucket underneath as it was when Canadians kicked them out of office for corruption the last time. And just like Stephen Harper and the Mike Duffy scandal, when confronted with the truth, Mr. Trudeau chose to mislead Canadians. Rather than come clean, Mr. Trudeau tried to cover it up. The Liberals haven't changed one bit. Justin Trudeau is today offering the same old Liberal antics that Canadians drove from office after the sponsorship scandal. He wants to take Canada back to the same old Liberal Party with the same old insiders and the same old scandals. Friends, let's remember that it was liberal arrogance and corruption that Stephen Harper promised to clean up. And today, after 10 years of conservative scandals, the liberals are asking you to trust them to clean up their mess. Well, friends, we are not going back.
Let me ask you, let me ask you, Edmonton, do you want to go back to the old corrupt, to the old corrupt Liberal Party ways? Where the country was governed not by what was best for you and your family, but by what was best for Liberal insiders. We're not going back. Do you want to go back to the Liberal Party of the sponsorship scandal, where Liberals always take care of themselves? We're not going back. A Liberal Party whose track record is one where they make promises to invest in Canadians during the campaign, but then bring in cuts to health care right after the election. We're not going back. A Liberal Party, a Liberal Party that promises child care in four successive election campaigns and delivers not one single space. We're not going back. A Liberal Party, a Liberal Party that will say anything before the election and does the exact opposite after the election. We're not going back. Canadians deserve better, and by voting NDP on Monday, we will do better and build the Canada of our dreams. <laughs> Monsieur Trudeau, Monsieur Trudeau has seriously manqué, seriously manqué the leadership on the issue of the Partenariat Trans-Pacific, as he has manqué in the scandal that ébranle presently his party. Il a laissé un de ses principaux conseillers donner à des lobbyistes des informations privilégiées sur la façon d'influencer leur chef. Les libéraux ont permis à une entreprise privée de savoir comment, quand et sur qui faire pression pour avoir la décision qu'ils souhaitent. Autrement dit, le cercle rapproché de M. Trudeau ouvre déjà la porte à l'influence des intérêts privés et des lobbyistes. Quand le scandale est sorti, les libéraux ont voulu blâmer les conservateurs. Ils ont qualifié ça d'attaque personnelle. Ils ont voulu nous faire croire que c'était une distraction dans la campagne. Puis ils ont essayé d'étouffer l'affaire en amenant M. Gagné à démissionner et en qualifiant ses gestes d'inappropriés. Ils sont tellement déconnectés de la réalité qui pense que M. Trudeau sort de ce scandale avec l'aura d'un champion d'intégrité. Ils veulent faire passer pour une vertu, un vice, qui est profondément enraciné dans la culture du Parti libéral, un vice que les Canadiens et que les Québécois surtout connaissent que trop bien. Et le pire dans tout ça, c'est qu'on apprend maintenant que M. Trudeau était au courant depuis le début he connaissait the vrai role of Monsieur Gagné. Monsieur Gagné travaille auprès de Monsieur Trudeau depuis des mois, pas uniquement comme conseiller, mais comme lobbyist payé par des intérêts privés. Et maintenant, le chef libéral fait la même chose que Stephen Harper a fait dans le scandale de Mike Duffy. Il essaie de cacher la vérité aux Canadiens. Les libéraux n'ont pas changé et n'ont surtout rien compris et rien appris. Ce sont toujours les mêmes vieux libéraux corrompus de l'ère des commandites. This time, in this election, for the first time in 148 years, we have a real choice. <laughs> As you, as you prove this spring, it's our party that reflects the hope and optimism of Albertans. This is the youngest province in Canada, home to families from across the country and every corner of the world. A progressive, modern province built on the strength of innovation, entrepreneurship, 
and an unwavering sense of community. A province with visionary leaders like Mayor Iveson, Mayor, Mayor Nenshi, and Premier Notley. Leaders who want a strong, reliable federal partner in Ottawa that works for families right here in this province. To every Albertan today, I make this commitment. As your Prime Minister, I will make sure that Ottawa works for you. We will deliver the progressive change that works for families right here in Western Canada. Healthcare, childcare, pharmacare, mulcare. That's the change we've been waiting for. This is the change that New Democrats will deliver. And our good friend Jack was fond of saying, and you'll recall, don't let them tell you it can't be done. The NDP needs just 35 more seats to defeat the Conservatives. Just 35 more seats to defeat Stephen Harper and bring change to Ottawa. Yeah. And here in Edmonton, as it is all over Canada, this election is a two-way race between the Conservatives and the NDP. Between fear and division and hope and optimism. I invite everyone here in Edmonton who wants change on Monday to join with the NDP and together we will defeat Stephen Harper and build the Canada of our dreams. The momentum for change began in Quebec and it spread right here to Alberta and now in just three days we have an historic opportunity before us an opportunity that we must not pass up. An opportunity to replace the politics of fear and division with our enduring belief in hope and optimism. An opportunity to think big, to be ambitious, and to dare to accomplish great things together. And an opportunity to finally clean up Ottawa. Let's roll up our sleeves, knock on every door, reach out to our neighbors because every single vote for change will make a difference right here in Edmonton. And together, my friends, with the NDP, let's go build the country of our dreams. Thank you. Merci. On continue.